This interview is a part of the Oklahoma Historical Society's Oral History Program, Living Legends Collection. This interview was originally conducted on May the 7th, 1971, at Northeastern State College in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. The interview was conducted by Miss Billy Smith, and that's B-I-L-L-I-E, Smith, S-M-I-T-H. The interviewee is uh, Mr. R. S. Bob Duncan, that's capital D-U-N-C-A-N, formerly a male student at the uh, Cherokee Male Seminary in 1907 in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. This material was re-recorded on December the 16th, 1988 for inclusion in the permanent collections of the Oral History Program by Judith Michener. Mr. R. S. Bob Duncan and uh, Mr. Duncan, we want to visit with you a few minutes and ask you some questions concerning your school days at the Mayo Seminary. Okay, when were you a student at the Mayo Seminary? Well, I went down Christmas time, 1906, and I uh, might say I started the first year, 1907. Mm -hmm. And uh, they asked me out there what, what grade, uh, and I didn't know what a grade was. I'd never been to school any, but I had gone to school the fall before. My mother had sent me to, uh, to uh, a man teacher and told him to push me to go and send me to seminary Christmas after Christmas. Mm -hmm. So he did and pushed me in arithmetic, but that was all. And when I got down, they asked me what grade, and I said, I never heard of a grade. I didn't know what grades were. Mm -hmm. So I said, why are you in arithmetic? And I showed them. I just completed fractions and in, in, in beginning to enter ready to enter a decimal fraction. Mm -hmm. And the boys in and they said, well, that's about sixth grade. So they put me in the sixth grade, but they had grammar and geography and history and everything, and I hadn't seen into any of those. And they, in those days, the grammar, they'd, they would diagram the sentences, mm -hmm. and it looked like rail fences to me, and <laughs> I had difficulty with that part of it, but but there were tricky fractions while the fish's head was as long as it's twice as long as his tail and all that and some given somewhere and they'd tell you what it some part weighed. I'd already uh, wrestled with that all fall and, and I, I had accomplished that and these boys were in, uh, right in the middle of that. And I was the only man in the class, only boy in the class could had it had that all mastered. Mm -hmm. And then in the meantime while some of these boys were getting up old enough to shave in the sixth grade yet, and Dr. Murdoch, who later became a congressman, you know, mm -hmm. and his wife uh, had written a lot of books, I think, too, but he, he was one of the professors, and he had these older boys, these boys, older boys in this sixth grade class, over in a special class, uh, giving them special training to, to skip the seventh and, and, and make the eighth mm -hmm. that spring term. So uh, I was a new boy I entered that this, this time of year, you know. Mm -hmm. But the boy I sat with was in it was in uh, this class this this class that he's been being pushed, and he suggested to him in there that they didn't why didn't they bring me in? And he said I was I was brilliant in the best man in the class in arithmetic anyway, mm -hmm. and so they did. They took me over there, and. Uh, I finished the sixth grade and, and mastered all this other. I had to work pretty hard to. Yeah, it finally came to me the over, overnight when it did. Mm -hmm. And uh, finished the sixth grade, and next year I finished the eighth grade. And uh, caught up with my brother, who had been there two or three years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's about all. Uh, that's about all uh, I had uh, mm -hmm. in in schooling, except. We had had military training there under Jack Brown, oh. Doctor Jack Brown. That's the sheriff living yet, mm -hmm. and we would get up at six in the morning, and uh, we'd have uh, thirty minutes drill and thirty minutes calisthenics. Oh. And uh, and when I went to World War One, uh, I had been a uh, stockman, and I had been uh, working for the. Uh, Bureau of uh, uh, Indian, uh, uh, not, uh, not Indian Affairs, but Bureau of Animal Industry. Uh, I was working for them when I when I was 
went into the Army. And they, when they saw my question there, why they took me over to brigade headquarters. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't have, uh, everything was horses then, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so <coughs> after we'd been there a few days, why they took me out to, to teach me drilling. <laughs> and I already knew it. Mm -hmm. I knew everything that they had when we uh, I had learned that right there at the seminary. Mm -hmm. And so I drilled one afternoon. <laughs> and they took me out on the range to ride with about 40 acres of men, but only about five or six of us in that brigade headquarters. Mm -hmm. The rest of them were, were cavalry. And uh, took me out there with this four fire boys. And w we went around one round, uh, around this 40 acres. and and the instructor out there had three of these boys come back and told me not, not to come back. So I had one afternoon cavalry training and one afternoon drill training. Mm -hmm. But I'd learned that at home, that, that cavalry business, I guess. Where were you stationed? Uh, in Menlo Park, California. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We were headed for Siberia, but the, the Russians were with us and against us, and, and, and they, they switched back, and so they sent us back the other way then to, to, to New York. Mm -hmm. Now, you remember any teachers particularly out the seminary that you'd like to tell us about? Well, this, this uh, uh, Dr. Murdoch and Jack Brown is, is, a, is a military. Uh, Were you military? Too? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had captains and, and sergeants and uh, ju just like uh, uh, just like the military. Mm -hmm. And we had three companies uh, uh, owing to the size of the, the grade in schooling. Or we had company A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we, will, we had to have uniforms when we, when we went to, we, we, it, it was a must to go to church Sunday somewhere. You picked the church, but outside of that, why well, you went with your, your company. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it, it was just military, just like military. And the calisthenics were just the same. Mm -hmm. Do you recall any things that you were allowed to do in your spare time? Well, yeah. Yeah, I had, I was in a room with uh, uh, all musical boys. I played the fiddle and, and one of the Shoto boys played the mandolin guitar. Felix Ross played the bass fiddle. Felix had <coughs> some squirrel skin strings on his bass fiddle. <laughs> They, they'd confiscate the bows and arrows. They wouldn't let them have bows and arrows. They'd confiscate a bow and take the string off of it, cut the bow in half and two for paddles. Uh -huh. And they had them in the archives uh, for that use. <laughs> <laughs> and they would use them. Uh, <laughs> and uh, they would uh, quarantine our room. So we couldn't have company and, and we couldn't visit other room because we have a rough house with, they would, gang up there with four chairs and have a square dance, you know, <laughs> and, we, uh, and uh, well, I remember Dr. Professor Thompson, who's principal of, of the school, had a big orchestra, and, and he played lead violin and had two second violins, but he just had the one, one lead violin, and uh, at night, we'd have a one-hour study period, and everything just as quiet in there as you could hear a mouse walking. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you'd hear a door squeak and look up, they'd be leading some boy out to take him out and paddle him for something he'd done. Mm -hmm. And uh, one night, uh, somebody tapped me on the shoulder. But in the meantime, though, why the, the, the superintendent's wife, uh, had me to come over to the music room and was teaching me to, to play, uh, teach me music. It was a must. I must come over there and learn. But I didn't, I didn't, it didn't dawn on me what she, what they were driving at, but I was, I was just 14. And uh, this night, well, I'd been taking lessons up there for quite a while under her and uh, just learned to read notes, see. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Somebody tapped me on the shoulder and I looked up to Dr. Thompson. And I thought, well, what have I done? And I couldn't, I knew I'd done enough, but what had they caught me doing? Mm -hmm. Take me out and give me a paddle. And so he led me out and he told me, 
And when we got out in the hallway, he said, go get your instrument and come down to the music room. So mm -hmm. he set me right upside there and played and lit playing lead. Oh, nice. And, uh, and I, I couldn't read it. I do pretty well. Uh, go through it once. Uh, I'd learn the tune going through it once, mm -hmm. and then I, I, could, I could play it. Mm -hmm. But if it had to stop or a tree or, or repeat or anything, why, well, I would be lost for a minute there, you know, that drone trouble I had. I remember that. Let's see, they had, had a clarinet and a cornet and slide trombone, bass fiddle, two second violin, drums, and piano. His wife played the piano mm -hmm. and had a good orchestra. And they played real well, too. Did they play concerts? Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, no, no, uh, we, we'd play for the Fremantle Seminary, and, and they did play concerts in town, but I didn't, I didn't happen to be with them when they did that. Mm -hmm. uh, I just did that the last semester that I was there. Uh, do you recall anything unusual that happened while you were at the seminary? Yeah, several of them, but I, I'd hate to repeat them, but I'll tell about one thing, one, one, one uh, uh, April Fool Day, a bunch of them had, had uh, framed up there to uh, go out on the river April Fool Day, and they lined up in military form. And instead of uh, disbanding, uh, they, they, they organized this company, and they just marched right on out to the river, stayed all day, and came back. And uh, I think there were 63 of that bunch. Some wouldn't go and some weren't invited. I don't guess I, I wasn't invited the way my brother did. He went. And uh, the next day, they had, uh, I believe, six man teachers. And they had one big schoolroom there with that number of row of seats. And they brought them in there and, and dismissed the others outside of the, outside of the building. Had them all out of the building and had two of the women teachers they had a big rotunda that came down like this skylight, see, mm -hmm. in the center of the building, and, and a big hallway went between there, and the stairway went up on that side, uh, on either side. And these two big schoolrooms were, uh, were on either side of this hallway, big wide hallway, and had these uh, women teachers as guards there, and had these men teachers in there, and they had a row of boys to paddle. They paddled football players, baseball players, everybody that was that went everybody that went swimming spent the day over there. Mm -hmm. And they paddled every one of them, football players and all. Mm -hmm. And they just took it like gentlemen. Because our, our best disciplinarians were the, were the higher up classmen. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were gentlemen, those boys were all of them. And uh, one, boy, one boy refused to take his paddling, but he, he, didn't, uh, uh, he didn't play football, baseball, or anything. But but he, 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 he didn't come in there. He didn't, he didn't report over there like he was ordered. And so this Dr. Murdoch went out to see if he could find him and did, met him on the stairs coming up from over on the east side of the building next to the office. The office was uh, right inside of the east entrance there. And he met him on the stairway there, and, and, and so he knocked, uh, knocked this professor uh, Murdoch down with his fist, oh. and uh, about this time, why, Mr. Uh, I don't remember names, but he had been a football player there at the seminary himself. Scott, his name was Scott. He he came up to the door about the same time, and so uh, uh, Professor Scott nailed him and. They drug him inside of the office and paddled him anyway, mm -hmm. and then then sent him home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They had discipline in there. Do you recall any special visitors that came to the seminary? Oh yeah, there were a lot of them, but I don't I don't remember mm -hmm. just who they were. Do you recall the burning of, of the main seminary? I wasn't there at that time. You were not I, I, there. I left there when when Northeastern opened. I came over here. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Were you uh, permitted to date any of the girls from the female school? Yeah, I met one out here today. Uh, I came over, walked over here on the 7th of May, the first 7th of May I attended. I walked over here from the male seminary, had a date with her. I was 14, she was 12. I asked her today how old she was, she said 12. And I walked her out to the river and 
spent the day and walked her back over here and then walked back from there and had a hilarious date. <laughs> <laughs> My first date. <laughs> she was amazed. Were you amazed when mm -hmm. she was she was in amazed. The hospital, I think, her uncle's in the hospital. Yeah. She works at the hospital. No, no. It's her sister. Do you remember anything in particular about the building? Uh, Mr. Mason, you know, the dining hall, the chapel. Did you have a chapel there? Yeah, the yeah. Well, uh, we in the, in the chapel, we had study hour in the, in the chapel. Did you go to chapel every morning, like the girls did before you went to classes every morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah every time, every morning. And uh, let me see, I used to remember what uh, was said every morning. Uh, I don't know. I've heard it so many times. I used to repeat it word for word, nearly the same thing over. A wise son makes a proud father, or something like that, and, mm -hmm. and 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 it was that kind of a lecture we'd get every morning. Every morning. Uh -huh. I had good had a good quartet, boys' quartet, and a good choir. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Thompson had an excellent voice. We thought she was everything, and she was. She mm -hmm. could really sing, and she would lead everything. Yeah, yeah. Did the uh huh. Every morning in chapel. Hey, can you tell us anything about athletic events, competitions? Oh yeah, we had the best baseball and football teams uh, in in those days. Mm -hmm. What schools did you play? Well, we played uh, played Kennel College, and then we played some up in Arkansas. Uh, I didn't play I didn't play football over there. I wasn't old enough, but I did over, over at Northeastern. I played both baseball and football up here. Okay, did you ever see a hanging in Calico since they did have gallows here in this No, place? my dad was the last uh, warden of the pen, uh, the, the last high sheriff. But uh, they, I read an article why they only hanged one man when he was there, but I was there when they hanged three. I, wasn't, I didn't see the hanging. My mother would take us. Uh, I was just, uh, I was born in 92, and he, he was there in, in 90 four or six somewhere. I was about two years old. I've got a picture of the building and uh, and a bunch of the prisoners and, and, and my picture's in it and I had on a dress, mm -hmm. a, a long tail shirt or whatever you want to call it. So you weren't too old then? No, but when I left there I was six years old. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, but my mother would take the whole family and, and, and about a week before hanging and, and wouldn't come back for about two weeks later. So I never saw her hanging, but I know they were three. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I remember one fellow's name. I'll repeat it. But I don't remember the other two. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, did you ever see an inauguration of a Tennessee chief or a witness in an election? I've seen an election, but I, I never did see an inauguration. I knew I lived next uh, uh, our farmer, John, the assistant chief uh, swimmer. Mm -hmm. He was assistant chief. And Chief Mays, Chief Sam Mays, used to come over with my dad's and stay for a week's time. He, he was a fox hunter, and he had good hounds, and so did my dad. Mm -hmm. And also Dr. Fite used to be here. He was a, he was a fox hunter. Mm -hmm. And they used to, uh, my dad and Dr. Fite used to, they had the best hounds available at that time. They had wolf or dog, and then they had another kind. I've forgotten what they called them. Uh, but anyhow, they all had, and they had one nigger, colored man, <laughs> Stick Ross, living out on the mountain mm -hmm. out here. He, he, he was a hunter. He hunted with them too, mm -hmm. and he was one of them. In fact, Stick was uh, uh, a member of the council. Mm -hmm. Colored man, member of the council. I can remember that. Mm -hmm. And I knew, I met one of Chief Harris's uh, daughters out here today, Callie Harris. Mm -hmm. I knew them. I knew all. I knew all. Of them. I knew Chief Mays, both Chief Mays, but but I can hardly remember Joy Mays. Mm -hmm. But I remember Sam Mays real well because he'd come over and stay for a week's time and hunt. Okay, what was graduation day like out at the seminary? Oh, they'd have a big time, and they usually have. They'd have contests, or oratorical contests, and things like that. And one irony thing was. Uh, Professor Thompson was strictly religious. He was a preacher's son, and, and he was religious, but he would he'd give every one of these boys a drink of liquor before they went out to speak. 
<laughs> I remember Grover Scales made a made a, a Baptist minister. You know, mm -hmm. he lived in uh, in Shawnee, I believe. Now his son is president of college down in I believe North Carolina somewhere. Anyhow, uh, he'd take a drink of liquor before he made his speech. He won he won the declamation contest once there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He'd take the he'd take the chair off of him before we went out there. What did downtown Hamilton look like? Did you know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I crippled up several ponies up and down that street. Mm -hmm. Does it look about the same as it does today? Do you see much difference? Well, yeah. There's not much in the, in the, the the main part of town, the building and stuff. There, there's not much change in that. But down to old jail, <coughs> just across the street from the jail. On the north side, they they had. Uh, this is not pertaining to the seminary thing. But mm -hmm. Doesn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. Well, they had they had to have uh, uh, a, a lot of horse stock there. They had mules and horses. I imagine had forty head there. They had a big barn just across the street there, mm -hmm. and uh, they had to furnish wood. Those prisoners prisoners cut wood and furnished wood for the for the Capitol building. And for the nigger seminary over northwest of town here, you know, mm -hmm. and and for the female seminary up here, in the insane asylum, it out there where the Sequoia School is now, we mm -hmm. call it insane asylum, mm -hmm. and uh, and for the prison, mm -hmm. and for the courthouse, the the prisoners punished all that wood, and they had to have teams haul that wood, mm -hmm. and they did, and they and they they punished the wood, the prison punished the wood. When I was, when I was a kid there. What advice would you give to college students now? How's that? What advice would you give to the young college students now? I'd dog. I'd say to uh, if I was giving them advice, I'd say recognize the discipline. That's what I would. I'd recommend. Had good discipline. Yes, uh, and, and the upperclassmen would help in in, in all the. All the, the the students that were trying to do something there, they wouldn't tolerate that stuff. They they were mischievous no. at doing anything in the world. I know one morning, uh, before they moved us down in that little little room, four of us in a room, we were all up there in a big room, about let's see, I think it was, I don't know how many were up there. It must have been ten or fifteen of them up there. Big long room, you know, and you'd put the cots in there head to foot clear down through the building, you know, and had a big stove up at the front end. And we had been over at at uh, church over here at town. We'd have Sunday school out there, but we'd come to church over town, march over here, military form, mm -hmm. and march back. And so we'd have to wear a uniform because uh, some boys, you know, had good clothes, and some of us had overalls, and then we'd come to town, there'd be too much difference, but we had to have a a particular kind of a uniform just alike, and you couldn't tell who was who when we came right. out of mm -hmm. that right. So we'd had our uniforms on, and this old boy and I that played together so much, getting up before 6 o'clock to get out and drill and take our calisthenics, you know, on Monday morning. And we'd had on our uniforms the evening before, Sunday evening. And so he pulled his belt out of his uniform pants, and I was sitting on the bed thumping his old mandolin, a guitar or something, and, and my old fat leg sticking up there, and he took his belt and popped it against my leg and raised a blister up on, right up on my leg nearly. And he just uh, stepped to the door, and, uh, and uh, the uh, heating stove was just right next to us there, and wood piled up there. We had to carry on, we cut our own wood. It brought there in poles at the mail seminary. The, Prisoners didn't furnish us wood. We had to furnish our own, cut our own wood to bring it up pool. Mm -hmm. We had it piled up there. So when he hit me on the leg with his, with his belt, the stairway was right in front of our, our door. It went down. And we was up on third floor there then. And, and Jack Brown was uh, had charge of that ward, and he was way down on the east end. We were on the west end of the, the, the building, and he was over on the east end of the building. And he he started to run down this stairway and I jumped up and grabbed a stick of stove wood when he when he went out the door and and 
he was afraid to go down. He couldn't run fast enough downstairs, so he was running down the hall. And uh, and I cut loose with him with a stick of stove wood. <laughs> and he was running, looking back, and he ducked it and went over his head and went clear to the far end of the hall and, and hit the, the end of the hall up next to the professor's door. And it sounded like a building was falling. Uh, <laughs> any kind of a noise would really ring. And so I just stepped back inside the door and another stairway went down over on that end of the hall from from the other end of the other end of the building and so he ducked down that stair before well, mr brown could get out and and when he did get out while well, he came to the door and Shoto was kind of fair complected boy and uh, and uh, when he when he got to the head of the stairs while well, another boy was coming up a kind of a fair complected boy wasn't Indian looking like we were. And anyhow, he lived on down the end of the hall uh, to the south, south wing. And he said, uh, and there was another boy uh, living in his room was fat complected. And he met, and it was just breaking day, it was before six o'clock. And he met Shoto running down the steps, and he thought it was this boy in his room because Shoto never, uh, never did. Uh, uh, frequent that stairway. We we went down only the there, and so, and so he took this boy round to the room, and, and this boy he met running down the hall was in the room. Mm -hmm. So Jack thought they, Mr. Brown thought they, they were both lying, and he just took them both round, paddled both of them. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, is Mr. Duncan is that right? Okay, thank you, Mr. Duncan, for visiting with us. It's well, been a real pleasure. I hope I haven't told you anything embarrassing. No, thank you.